Today's goal is Mach 100. Now we've modified planes in the past, plenty of them, and I think the fastest I've ever gotten was Mach 20 something, but today we're taking it a whole step further. Our base plane for this challenge is the F-18 Legacy Hornet. This is the one by DC Designs because the files are available to edit. Now by default, this plane's top speed is nothing impressive. I think around Mach 1.8. Right now we're going Mach 1.23. Let's hop into these game files and get started. So here we are, first up the F-18's engine files, which are kind of daunting at first, but what we're mainly going to look at is static thrust right here. So right now, by default, 13,000 pounds of thrust. I think to start this off, we just go 10x thrust, add a zero in there. We will save this, load back into the sim, see how fast we can get with that. And then I have a few other tricks up, well, actually a lot more tricks up my sleeve to see if we can really get this thing to Mach 100 because it's gonna take a lot more than just that. 2,000 years later. So we're loaded back in. Nothing seems abnormal until you release the parking brake and the plane really wants to get going. So in three, two, one. Oh yeah, this is uh, much faster. Much faster already. We're already at Mach 2. Or, okay, we're already at Mach 3. But we know this won't get to Mach 100, obviously. So we'll fast forward until I get some altitude. We see the top speed on this. And then we'll go back in and we'll edit a few more files. A few moments later. So we're at 46,000 feet. And as you can see, we're going Mach 4.6 or 3,000 knots. Yes, we're creeping up in speed slightly, but we're not going to get much over Mach 5 if we would even get to Mach 5. So let's go back, edit some files. Let's get rid of some drag. We have too much drag on this thing. So back into the files we go, but this time I have the flight model file open. So basically anywhere we see drag coefficient, we're going to change to zero. This is going to be slightly boring. So again, we'll fast forward until we're loaded back into the sim with no drag. So we are loaded back in, hopefully with a lot less drag. If I did everything right, there's a huge chance that I didn't. Throttle up again. The Oh, that takeoff may have felt even faster. And there's Mach 2. I think whatever I did worked because there's Mach 4. Mach 5. Okay, I definitely did some things right. Oh, now we are buffeting. Oh my gosh. Look at the G's going crazy. In the oh my. Ooh, okay. Throttle back. There's Mach 6.4. Oh, our plane is uh, losing its mind. Okay, this is idle throttle, by the way. Oh my gosh, okay. I think we need a little bit more altitude before we do something as crazy as that. We're already at 50,000 feet as well. And we're hovering at around close to Mach 6 without any throttle at all. Okay. We will slowly roll onto the throttle. It says we're going 5,000 knots at 78,000 feet. Hopefully we can keep it steady. If not, I can go back into the flight model and try to fix that as well because I'm not sure what's causing us to bounce around so much. Here we go. Throttling back up at 86,000 feet. Let's see what it can do. So we're at full throttle here, 87,000 feet. Altitude definitely cured that a little bit. We are about to pass... Mach 7, and there's 10,000 knots. This is what the view from 88,000 feet in an F-18 looks like. Again, we'll fast forward until we reach our top speed, and then we'll go back into the files and see what else we can do. One eternity later. So we are officially in Dark Star territory. There's Mach 10, 19,000 knots at 130,000 feet. All it took was reducing the drag as much as possible and 10 times the normal thrust. Now, as you can see, our Mach speed is not increasing very quickly and it actually just started, went down for a second. Now it's going back up. It's kind of freaking out. Again, this is what that view looks like. Quite spectacular up here around Mach 10.5, but let's get back into these files because our dream number, again, Mach 100. And here we are back into the engine files we go. Again, static thrust, I think it's time. We add one more zero. So we try 
a hundred times the normal thrust, this is probably a terrible idea. But before we get to 100x the plane's normal thrust, it's time for the sponsor of this video, the Toby Eye Tracker 5, which I've been using the entire video, if you haven't noticed. You guys know I don't love the hassle of VR, so an eye tracker is my go-to. I love that you don't have to have anything on your head and you can just set a keybind to toggle it on and off. So it's a seamless transition between using it and not. Of course, an eye tracker, as you've seen in this video, is gonna make your gaming experience a lot more more immersive, but also if you ever plan on playing a realistic sim that has dogfighting like DCS, some sort of eye or head tracking is pretty much a necessity. I was talking about seamless and I love how seamlessly it integrates into my setup. You mount it on your monitor and then just forget it's ever there. But it also works seamlessly with Microsoft Flight Sim and takes basically no setup besides the initial calibration, which is super easy. And because Toby is having its ambassador bonanza right now, the Eye Tracker 5 is currently 15% off. Yeah, you heard that right in the link below. And if you really don't have money to spend on one right now, which I completely understand, there's also a sweepstakes going on where you can win game keys. That's also linked linked below, so don't miss out on that. And as always, I put my money where my mouth is. I actually bought an eye tracker 5 back in March of 2023. We'll put some proof on screen. Before I ever had any communication with Toby at all, so make sure to check out those links below, and thank you to Toby for sponsoring this video. We're going all out, folks. We are back in the engine file. If you can tell already, this is uh, 100 times normal thrust, which is 1.3 million pounds. We had one more zero, 13 million pounds of static thrust. Save it and see what happens. Uh, so I just loaded back in. That is completely normal. Okay, so clearly this is going to be essentially impossible to control. So we'll slew mode to like maybe a few hundred thousand feet and see what happens then. So here we are, 330,000 feet. Oh no. Okay, get your control back. Come on plane, figure it out. Six hours later. Okay, so we are back after much, 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 much trial and error and having the plane flip more and more and more. I reset everything. We are at 3000 times normal engine thrust, but this seems to be about as much as you can do without the plane flipping. So idle throttle at the moment, we're over 130,000 feet. We're at 220,000 feet. See, it even gets a little wobbly right there. That scares me because it started off this run flipping and now it's fixed. Mach 12, and we're just gonna tilt our nose up slightly, start increasing throttle and hope that we don't start flipping. That's 40,000 knots for the record. Let's see what happens here. Here we go. Like I told you, I don't know. So like I was saying at the beginning of this video, I got this plane to Mach 20 before, but that was modding it in Flight Sim 2020. Maybe with how the new physics model works, it's not possible in this. So did we reach Mach 100? Absolutely not. And our F-18 is freaking out. Thank you again to Toby for sponsoring this video.